Hey welcome back guys, my name is Molten and in this video I'll be showing you exactly how to play against one of the oldest and most popular chess openings, the Gyoko Piano, also referred to as the Italian game. Before we get started, if you enjoy the content, please subscribe to the channel and click on the notification bell so you get updates every single time I upload a new video. Okay, so the Gyoko piano starts after 1e4e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4, bishop c5, white plays c3 in order to put two pawns in the center. This is very popular, especially um, at the club and tournament levels. Black should play knight f6, d4, we should capture the pawn here, white captures, and we should play the immediate check in order to stop white from immediately pushing the pawns. Here, white has three main ways to block the check. The oldest and the one we'll look at first is the move knight to c3. Here black has a very clear refutation or at least a way to get a very good position. And this line has generally not been played for a very very long time and um, it's not popular anymore by white. Since black can play the move knight takes e4 here. White can castle. And here we want to take the knight with the bishop. Bishop takes c3. And the only tricky move here for white is to push the pawn to d5, since if he takes the bishop on c3, we can simply play the move d5 with a very good position for black since we're simply a pawn up. So generally white will play the move pawn to d5. And here we should simply remember a couple of moves to get us a good position. And it starts with the move bishop to f6. White will play the move rook to e1. We can retreat our knight to e7, rook takes e4, and then we should play the pawn move d6 in order to stop white from pushing the d-pawn. And here we are a pawn up, and white does have a few tricks, so we need to be a bit careful, but if we know what we're doing here, we should generally end up in a very um, good position. Uh, white has two main options here, and one is to go bishop g5 straight away, and the other one is to go bishop b5 check first. The least popular one is bishop to b5 check, after which black should respond bishop to d7, and after bishop takes, queen takes, here if white tries bishop g5, we can simply take it, and here we can simply castles or h6, both giving black um, very good positions. Here we can also just castle, and we don't have to worry about this trick that white has in this position, uh, of knight takes h7. Here it doesn't actually work because after king takes h7, if white tries to play queen h5 check, we get king g8. If rook h4, we play f5. Queen check, king to f7. And if queen check back, then we can actually just move the king up the board uh, with king f6. And the king looks slightly weakened, but we're actually going to just take the d5 pawn next move in a lot of positions and there's no clear way for um, white to continue his attack and black has a very good position here. Therefore the sacrifice doesn't usually work if white has already thrown in the bishop b5 check. However if instead white immediately goes bishop g5 which is the better option here we can take it and I suggest we play the move h6 since if we castle here now the trick is a little bit more unclear with the bishops on the board and white can actually play this and after king g8, rook h4, f5, queen h7, king f7 white has a very strong move in this position and so that's the move rook to h6 it actually stops back from easily developing and even though there's no clear win here um, for white, um, it's still a very messy and unclear position where he does have some chances here after the move rook to e1. So I would avoid this position um, as black. So if they haven't traded the light squared bishops, then uh, we can look to play the move h6 instead and not allow this knight takes h7 and not allow this knight takes h7 trick. 
So after h6, the best move for white is to go queen e2, since if knight f3, we will just castle next move. The idea after queen e2 is that once we take the knight, white's going to play the move rook to e1, attacking um, our knight on e7, which can't easily be defended. But here, black has a very good move, and that's the move bishop to e6, blocking completely the e-file. Since if white takes it, we can answer with the move f6. Let's say white plays rook e3. We can answer with c6, followed by g6 next move. So for example, rook h3, takes, takes. Here white's looking to play the queen into h5 check to start an attack. So we can play the move pawn to g6. And um, our king looks weakened at the moment, but it's um, absolutely fine since next move we'll follow up with king f8 to g7, artificially casting with um, a very good blockade on the e-pawn and um, a very strong pawn center and also pawns on the king side. So this is generally a very good position for black. Another option here for white is the move knight b to d2, after which black has two main options. One fully equalizes, so we'll look at the move knight takes e4 first. Here white um, should play the move d5, since if he castles, black can simply answer with knight takes d2. And after, say, rook e1 check, we can answer with knight e7. And bishop takes, bishop takes, trading off into a middle game where we're simply a pawn up, for example, castles, and we can play c6 with a big advantage for black. Therefore, here white should play the tricky move, pawn to d5, after which we can respond with knight e7. Let's say castles, knight takes d2, takes d2, bishop takes d2, and here white's whole idea is to throw in the move um, pawn to d6 to sort of disrupt black's development. And here we shouldn't try to save the bishop on um, d2 since white has a lot of tricks involving bishop takes f7 as well as attacks along the e-file. Therefore we should simply take on d6, queen takes d6, and we don't want the queen to take the pawn on d6 since it really stops our pieces from developing. So we can give a pawn back with pawn to d5, bishop takes d5, and simply castles, and the resulting position is more or less just um, a draw since white has enough pressure to eventually win the d-pawn, which black should uh, most likely give it back, and the resulting position is just a bishop versus knight um, equal ending. However, if you're in a must-win game here for black, then I would consider playing the move pawn to d5 to avoid lots of the equal endings we saw after knight takes e4. Here, after white takes the pawn on d5, knight takes d5, the resulting position is slightly better for white, but we retain a lot of pieces on the board, and I don't think it, there's anything wrong with black's position, and this is perfectly playable. Lastly, we'll look at what I consider to be the best option for white, and that's the move bishop d2 on move 7. Here what I consider to be the best move for white is bishop to d2, after which black should take it, and after knight takes, we follow up with this important pawn break, pawn to d5, breaking up white's pawn center. After pawn takes, knight takes, white's left with a position with this isolated queen's pawn, which can become a very long-term weakness. Here the best move for white is to play queen to b3, after which a lot of games, especially at the grandmaster level, has ended in a perpetual draw here after the move knight to a5, attacking the queen and bishop. And the best move for white is to follow up with queen to a4, knight to c6, threatening knight to b6 next move. Therefore, white usually responds with queen to b3, and the game ends in a perpetual. However, if we want to play on in this position, then black should simply consider playing the move knight g to e7, and for example, castles, castles, and we can simply um, follow up after rook e1 with the move c6. And next move, we can play the move knight to b6, and then develop our bishop on c8 with a perfectly playable position for both sides. 
If instead I move 10 white castles instead, then we can simply castles. And if white plays um, normal moves here, we can just play a position against the isolated queen's pawn. Maybe develop the bishop to g4 and drop the knight back to say b6 with what I consider to be a very um, easy to play position as black. Therefore, white has a very tricky move in this position, that's to move knight to e5. And the idea is that white wants to get rid of the isolated queen's pawn as quickly as possible. Here we can't take the pawn on d4 due to some tactics. Instead, we should take the knight on e5, and then play a move knight to f4 here. The main move here for white is to play knight f3 in order to stop queen g5 tricks. And here black can follow up with the move bishop to g4. Idea being that we want to damage um, white's pawn structure next move. The most popular move for white follows queen to b3. And here black has a very interesting move and that's the move pawn to b5 attacking the bishop and forcing it to a square it doesn't want to go to. For example, bishop takes b5 is immediately losing after rook to b8 since white will have troubles um, dealing with this pin and threats of c6 as well as threats of taking the knight on f3. While queen takes b5 simply runs into bishop takes f3 and white can't take back because of queen g5 followed by queen g2 checkmate. Therefore white will usually throw in this move rook to d1 and here we can simply follow with queen e7 and let's say bishop d5, we can play rook a to d8. And in the final position, I believe black has absolutely no problems here. And if anything, black has the better chances in this um, position. Okay, this concludes our look into the Gyoke piano from both sides. If you're going to play this as white, then I would suggest you play the bishop d2 line and look a lot more into the queen b3 positions. However, what I've given you here as black should be enough to get you a very equal and playable position from the opening. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.